Welcome to Modern Aikidoist Podcast. My sincere thanks to listeners and those who have liked, subscribed, and commented. Your interest is noticed and deeply appreciated. Today's podcast is about Kyushu Jitsu, or pressure point techniques. In the martial arts world, the use of pain through pressure points is fairly common, although not universal. The idea of being able to cause immense pain or manipulate an opponent easily by using a tiny amount of force is a very appealing one. The fascination has gone so far as to cover dim mock or death touch. This was supposedly a practice of being able to hit or strike a particular pressure point or series of pressure points as to cause death either instantly or within days. I find such claims to be extremely dubious, if not outright ridiculous. My attitude on such claims is best summed up by the famous quote by Carl Sagan, Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. You want to claim that you can knock someone unconscious with a single blow? Sure. That's fairly well established. The claim you can poke them lightly with one finger in a certain place during a certain time of day and they will die instantly, well that's a whole nother level of claim. The beauty of such a claim is that it really can never be verified. I think there are quite a few people who are skeptical enough that they wouldn't mind being the guinea pig for that experiment. How I believe it would really go down is that the dim mock practitioner would likely refuse to strike someone even if they were fully willing to take it. They would seek refuge in the moral high ground by saying that they would never kill someone just to prove the point. Since their claim will never be proven, they are safe. I am highly dubious of such claims and will remain so until credible evidence is put forth. Dim mock aside, there are quite a few who teach and train Kyushu Jitsu. I was taught some techniques myself and initially they seemed appealing, but over time I grew out of them as I realized what they really are. I was disappointed as I came to realize these things work well on a calm person just standing still, but that was about it. Having experienced the intensity of a dynamic fight and the effects of adrenaline, I believe most of what is taught with pressure points would be useless in a fight. There certainly are sensitive and vulnerable areas to the body where moderate pressure can produce some remarkable discomfort. Some areas can produce outright pain. Kyushu Jitsu tends to focus more on obscure points than on the obvious ones. Aikido has a few techniques which use these points. Yankyo comes to mind, as does Ikkyo. With Yankyo, which is a forearm grasp, the base knuckle of the index finger is often used against one of the four pressure points on the forearm, which are a few inches up from the wrist. If you hit them just right, they can be quite uncomfortable. They are almost painful, but nothing that would really stop you if you were determined. I find Yankyo is more about controlling the elbow than the shoulder, than the body, than it is about causing pain on a tiny point of someone's forearm. The other example I mention is with Ikkyo, usually employing a sensitive point just below the tricep when pinning the arm to the floor. You can roll the wrist bone down on that point and cause a pretty high level of discomfort. As with the forearm points, they are zingers, but not really anything more than that. Cute, but not really compelling. The arm bar itself is far more functional and reliable in my opinion. One teaching point about Kyushu Jitsu is that about 40% of people are not sensitive or responsive to it. I've heard many instructors state this, and my own experience over the years has confirmed it. Some people just don't experience pain or discomfort when you hit those points. Even when a pressure point works, it might not work. A seminar I hosted years ago, we were experimenting around after the class sessions. The Yankyo points of the forearm are also on the shin, just above the ankle. And I'll tell you, at least for me, when somebody hits one of those points above my ankle, it hurts like anything. People typically drop to the ground due to the pain. Anyway, a friend of mine goes to demonstrate this on another instructor who never felt this before and was curious. It got applied and he didn't go down. The response from my friend who applied it was that it doesn't work on some people due to the fact that it doesn't cause the pain. The instructor said, oh, it hurts a lot, but it's just pain. There are people who are just not compelled by mere pain to fall over. And he wasn't even in a hostile or fight mode, which makes pain compliance even less successful. The conclusion I have currently on the use of pressure points is that they are largely parlor tricks to wow newer students and attract people who find such things amazing. As I said before, there are vulnerable and sensitive areas of the body, and knowing how to use them to manipulate an opponent is an important skill set to have as a martial artist. These are on my list to understand and teach, and I've left the parlor trickery behind. The martial arts has way too much of that. If you want to see what happens when the parlor tricks get too out of hand, go look into George Dillman. Dillman was a legitimate karate instructor back in the 60s who went on to form a school around Kyushu Jitsu. If you search on YouTube, you can see him claim and demonstrate no-touch knockouts. 
He founded his school on pressure point fighting. The thing about his claims is that when he tries to demonstrate his techniques on someone who isn't one of his students, he always fails. The explanation is always, well, pressure points don't work on about 40% of people, so you must be one of those 40%. It's the perfect justification for the failure. Really what is going on is his students have been subjected to subtle suggestion, which is a low-level hypnotism. I was thinking of doing a whole podcast on that subject because the martial arts is rife with it, and if there is interest, I will do that. Many years ago, I did a fair amount of research into Kyushu Jitsu just to see if there was anything of value there. The pressure points themselves are based on the meridian points of acupuncture. The theory goes that these points of the body can be used to heal it as through acupuncture or acupressure, or used to harm it through striking them. I have had acupuncture treatments and they have produced remarkable results, so I believe there is something to it. It's not just voodoo. However, the idea that someone can use extremely precise pinpoint strikes to stop someone's heart or completely disable them, well, I find that one hard to believe. I would want to see it before I can believe it, and not by an instructor showing me on his own student who can be trained to respond. Until such a time, I'm extremely skeptical. As I said earlier, there are vulnerable points to the body, ones which are great to know about. I really wouldn't call them pressure points, and many of them don't really coincide with the meridian points of traditional Chinese medicine. Some do, but then again those points cover the body, so many of them may be just coincidental. The ones I prefer are extremely reliable and aren't ineffective 40% of the time. If anything is only 60% reliable, that is too low for me to spend a great deal of time training on. I want things that are 80% or more, and 90% or above is even better. So what are those areas? Well, here are my favorites. The neck. A moderate strike to the side or back of the neck can knock someone out. Placement is somewhat important, but the nerves running through the neck to the brain are abundant in that area and can have a big effect on someone's ability to continue functioning, even if it's only for a second or two. You hit it right and they can be knocked unconscious much easier than you would imagine. The horseshoe, which is a nickname given the area in a shape of a horseshoe around the top, front, and beneath someone's ear, that includes the rear side of the jaw. A moderate to solid strike to this area affects the equilibrium and can cause a brownout or a blackout. The cross face. This is a nerve point just underneath the cheekbone and it isn't good for striking but for applying pressure, usually with a forearm or a shin. I've yet to run across someone who is immune to the pain of a cross face, so the 40% thing doesn't apply. Cross faces are extremely painful but the real benefit is that they can easily control the head particularly in pinning situations. You pin someone's skull to the ground and you have excellent control over them. The mark. The mark is an old school term for the solar plexus. A decent blow to the mark will cause someone's breathing to lock for a short period of time. It's a high value target for boxers and pugilists for this reason. Even if someone has a lot of muscle in their torso, the mark is still quite vulnerable. A stout enough strike can knock the wind out of someone, which is quite uncomfortable and can stop someone from their violent intentions. The liver, spleen, and kidneys. These are very vulnerable organs, and you can knock someone out with a strike to the liver. The spleen and kidneys are smaller targets, but can also be painful when they are hit hard enough. Body blows are often overlooked in fighting, but they shouldn't be. The IT band. This is a tendon which runs down the outside of the thigh, pretty much exactly where the seam on a pair of jeans runs. A moderate blow to the IT band with a knee can easily collapse that leg, and the result is someone drops. It's also pretty easy to land a blow there accurately with a bit of practice. The only people I've found who are immune to it are Muay Thai fighters who spend a lot of time getting kicked there and they build up an immunity to it. For everyone else, it's extremely vulnerable. The groin. The groin is probably the most mentioned target in martial arts and a blow to the groin is painful. It could end a fight. However, don't count on it. I've been hit hard in the groin while in an agitated state and it didn't do much more than motivating me to get mean, and I'm not the toughest or meanest guy out there. Also, the groin is something the subconscious brain tries hard to protect, so it's more difficult to land a strike to the groin than you think. Groin shots are fine, but they are not my favorite because of this. The IT band is far easier to land a successful strike on. These are the spots I've found as the most reliable and easiest to target and the ones which provide the most bang for your buck when you hit them. An honorable mention is to the upper ribs just under the armpit, but that one's harder to get to. If you do get there with a fist, elbow, or shoulder, it can really provide a big effect. 
It really is a matter of opportunity to get there, though. There are other spots, too, but they fall into the category like the ribs under the arm do. If you can get to them, fine, but going after them when they don't present themselves probably won't work very well. It is good to have the details about all manner of the body's vulnerable points, but never rely on that aspect for your technique to work because it may fail you. What are other topics you're interested in hearing covered in this podcast? Please share your ideas in the comments if you're watching this on YouTube, or go to the Facebook group Aikido the Marshall site and post a comment. You can always support this podcast by donating either through a monthly sponsorship or a single donation of any amount you like. I always enjoy hearing from listeners of the show, whether through the comments or questions. Thank you all for sharing your interest. Enjoy your training.